Hello. We are back. We are back with Carrie. We're so glad you could make it today. Uh, can't leave Carrie out of the readings. We have to no. have her here. So um, today's going to be super fun. I'm Rachel Archelaus, founder of the Intuitive Art Academy and a psychic medium. This is Carrie Roldan, <laughs> also very psychic, and your business BFF. Yeah. And Rachel and I, like before we, so I'm excited to just, not to just do readings today. I'm excited to do readings today. But just before this call, we were a little bit giggly, like a little bit um, giggly and excited. Rachel got a call that we thought was, we thought was like a really, um, a call that we'd been waiting for, but it was not. <laughs> um, but that made us giggly and excited. And um, yeah, I'm just super excited to be in this space, this space of readings with you, Rachel. I feel like the last time you did one for me and we did one for you. Um, yeah, I'm just excited to be here in this space. I feel a little giggly and excited today. Me too. So the last reading that I received was from our friend Dina. We traded readings right before she died. Um, which I feel very grateful for. And I'm still in contact with her like daily now. So it's not like she's really gone all that far, but um, she gave me just the most wonderful insights. And um, I just, I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for the validation that readings give me. And even though I just do them with my friends because I happen to have a lot of really psychic friends, we can do that here. We can do that here. Or you can go to your favorite intuitive or psychic. And when I offer readings, I will let you know. I know a lot of people ask me that. I just only offer them once in a while. So um, that way you guys can come here and get a little taste for free. If you want to show appreciation monetarily, you can though. This channel, um, you can give a super thanks, you can do a super chat, you can join the channel if you want to. So feel free, but it's never needed. And um, yeah, it's so fun. So hi, Guillaume. Hi, AG. Good to see you. Wow, Marilyn on the other side of the country from where we are right now. Um, but yeah, Carrie, do you want to start with you? I mean, I'm always willing. <laughs> What I was going to say is how grateful I am for every single reading I've ever received, mm -hmm. um, especially my very, very first, which actually wasn't from you, Rachel. It was my very first experience with a psychic. Um, uh, wow. I mean, so many of those things, um, one, happened, happened quickly. Two, it was super duper validating. Three, have like shaped the life that I'm living now, like because I, um, those, having that reading gave me confidence, right? It helped me, it validated like all the things. And um, yeah, my life has forever changed for the better. So we're saying that because yes, Rachel, I happily will receive a reading from you. Uh, receive is my word for the year. So I'll, I will happily receive a reading from you. Um, and two, it just means don't be afraid. You guys don't be shy. Don't be afraid to ask um, for a reading. So I am, I am at your your, I don't want to say disposal, but um, yes, I'm here. I would, I would never dispose of you, Carrie. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll get started with Carrie, but just if you're new here, um, how we do this is you can put a question in the chat. And once I've gone through and done one for everyone who's put one there, then I can do another round. And sometimes we can get to a second question, sometimes not. So if you want, uh, just put your question there while I do carries and then we'll get to you. And AG is saying, I agree. The readings and the synchronicities really do help with direction immensely. I would agree as well. Yeah. Even being like, I live intuitively. I I'm, I'm always listening to my higher self, but it's still really nice to hear it from someone else's mouth as well. You know what I mean? Like that extra validation or have you thought of this? Have you been ignoring this? Like that is some good stuff too. Okay. That's usually what it is for me. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And hi, Anita from Ohio. Glad you're here. Your picture looks really cool. 
Okay. So Carrie, writing the date down. Cool date, 818. What can I help you with today? What would you like some clarity on? I would actually like some help with receiving. So receive is my word for the year. And um, I, I want to believe I'm really good at that. But I find myself behaving in ways that maybe are less conducive to the receiving that I'm asking for. So um, I like it. I love it when you help me formulate the questions. But I'm thinking about um, the path of least resistance to my receiving what I asked for. How can you most easily allow more receiving? That sounds good. Okay. All right. I asked this question to Dina last week. She gave me a really good answer. So I may have already shared that with you, but I'll share it with everybody when I'm done. So feel free to chat with the folks while I'm doing this. All right. So if you guys have never seen um, Rachel do intuitive art or any of us, um, oh, look, there she's going to show you. It is a pretty qu quick and easy process of um, relaxing and connecting and then letting her hand be her guide. Um, she puts some colors, shapes, whatever comes through her hand on paper, and then um, she's able to decode it because the word or the colors and shapes have meaning. Oh, and I already saw a little bit of it and I'm super excited. Okay, wow, this isn't what I was expecting at all. Um, not that that's good or bad. Um, so this background here is a very light gray. And to me, gray is intuition and white is truth. And I'm going to use both of those words here because it's a light wash. It's an ever present thing too. So do what you can to hear your truth and your intuition in every moment, right? This is a all day long thing. This is a, I'm, I'm open and I'm present. That's like what this is. I'm open and I'm present all throughout the day. Um, and then in here, this is actually, I pulled two different times, but it's basically the same color. So the star, which is what I would kind of read that as, is a like spiritual alignment inspired action hybrid. And it's all over the place, right? We've talked about your um, productive puttering, right? In a different way. That was like little flex. This is a, I'm, I'm over here and I'm over here and I'm over here. And how can I be connected when I'm so busy, but you can? Maybe it's even that little belief adjustment that you needed. I can be, I am connected and being intuitive while I'm all over the place. I have the capacity for everything. Everything my life is calling me to do, I can do. That's that's huge because you have resisted that a lot in the past. That's too much for me. That will make me tired. I'm not even going to go down that. I'm going to, you know what I mean? And then yes. in the middle here, there is a concentrated section of basically the same color with just a little bit more red. So I'm going to call this the heart of the drawing because it sort of looks like if this was a person, this is where the heart would be. Mm -hmm. And that is inspired spiritual action. Mm. This, is star this is a strong message for you. I have the capacity. I have the capacity. Some, anything I'm called to do, I have the capacity for. I can stay connected during all things. This is a strong message for me because generally when I ask those questions, it's like, relax, have fun, mm -hmm. be on the path of joy. Like it's, this is actually, um, a, I don't want to say a little bit of a finger wag, but it is like a, it is a call to, um, listen to the truth, right? Like that is the message feels strong 
And like, it's um, actually the message feels like me, which makes sense because it's coming from my higher self. Um, but you love a good finger wag. I sure do. And it is like, hey, quit the crap. You can stay connected all the time. That that is is what I'm hearing. Like that gray color. Um, I wrote, you said, do what you can to hear truth and intuition in every moment. And I underlined in every moment. And then you were like, yeah, because you can be. You don't have to compartmentalize that part of your life. I am open and present every moment of every day. Thank you. Thank you. And then everything else, the the star, the zigzag, like, I love that because that is what my life looks and feels like, a little bit of ping-ponging. But I love that it was came in the shape of a star because, um, hello, hello, <laughs> I am a star. And, um, yeah, just that reminder that, like, if I'm called to do it, I can. I love it. Thank you. Um, so what it's, what it's hitting me with is, like, no excuses. You can be connected and you can do whatever you think you can do. So stop thinking that you can't. You can. I don't know. I don't know if your higher self would use that tone necessarily, but yes. <laughs> well, I don't know if my higher self would use that tone either, but I am receiving it in a good way. Yeah, I know. I'm receiving it in a, um, like, I think sometimes I will receive find joy and do it. Like, I don't want to say it's a cop out. It's not a cop out. It feels amazing. Um, but this just feels a little bit like hold yourself accountable to what you know. And it, it feels good. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like a finger wag. It feels like a um, inspired lift up to the truth. So yeah. Yeah. Excellent. All right. We got lots of questions now. I know we always do. They love these. Okay. So um, the first question is from AG. Can you let me know how my love life looks? No lol needed. No lol. We can do that. Um, I, I have a question about this. I mean, I think I know, but is this how my love life currently looks or uh, what is in store? <laughs> my, I feel like it's what's in store. <laughs> Well, you know what it's probably going to show is probably going to show your vibrational state right now about your love life. So then you can alter it to your liking. Um, but yeah, we'll take a look and Carrie, feel free to check. Yeah. Oh, oh goodness. This has me yawning already. Um, I was going to do a drawing, but I think I'll let Rachel draw and I will add a color commentary. Meanwhile, I will let you know, I agree that note taking is a wonderful thing for synchronicity and how things are evolving. And, um, oh, yay. I'm reading all of AG's comments. Yes, this is so cool. You're going to love it. Okay. So feel free to screenshot it if you want to keep it. I'll try to center it for you. So this is a cool one because this the sun has actually been coming up for me quite a bit lately. This big circle kind of reminds me of the sun and it's my yellow color, which is joy. And then here, this is thought, this is like a mental color. So you're thinking a lot about what you want, which is good. And you're noticing when you're happy, which is good. Um, and this down here is purple. It's kind of like um, making a little, it's like a catcher's mitt. <laughs> and I think this is what you, you're looking for stability. You're looking for strength in someone. You're looking for someone you can relax with, someone to have fun with, someone who feels aligned to your values. And I, the thing that I can see here is that you're thinking positively about it, even if that person isn't here yet, even if you are in your head about like, well, I like this, but I don't like that. Oh, I like that. And I don't like that. Um, you are in a good place vibrationally to attract someone that you really love. So even if it's difficult at this very moment, 
keep on noticing what you like, what you enjoy, what you want, and know that this is totally possible. You have high standards, which is really good, but that also means that you've got to let your vibration do the work and bring someone to you. They will pro maybe they're already in your life and maybe you haven't seen them in that way yet. That's kind of what happened to me 12, 11 years ago with my partner. I'd already known him for a really long time. And I just never kind of thought that we would be together in that way. But he is that strong person who on the surface might not look like we have much in common, but deep down is really good. So anyway, just food for thought, um, look in unexpected places and you let it come to you. You're not the chaser here. You're the receiver. So um, you're doing everything right. Keep focusing on the positive and everything will be great. Rachel, what was, what does your purple color mean again? Um, spirituality, spiritual connection. So, oh, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> um, I just wanted to point out that that is at the, <laughs> sorry, this sneeze won't come. You, you described it at the bottom as like stability and like that catcher's mitt, but it is also what she's moving toward, right? That uh -huh. spirituality, that spiritual connection. I love it. And the squiggliness means, at least in my mind as I'm reading it, it means it's moving toward her as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It. So good. That was really good. All right. Thank we got you. Go. Appreciate it. What did you say? No Carrie? more. Sorry, she says no more settling for less. Yes, no more because there's no need to. There's no need to. You have a really strong point of attraction on that. Okay, Guillaume. My word for 2022 is flying, but I feel stuck on the ground with no signs of moving. Why is this mm. still happening? You gonna join me, Carrie? I am going to join you on this Thank one. You. So. You're going to get a double dose here. Okay. So the question is, why do I feel stuck? Or why do I continue to feel stuck? So, um, again, I would like to frame the question about in how can Guillaume get unstuck? <laughs> I feel like that's, a, that's probably the question. Well, I don't know. What do you think, Rachel? Do you want to draw on why it's happening or how he can get unstuck? Let me see what if he's commenting. Well, I can tell you why, because if you keep looking at it, if you keep noticing that you're stuck, then you can't be unstuck. It's kind of like if you keep thinking that you're lost, you can't find the path because you're not looking for the path. You're looking at how you're lost. So um yeah carrie why don't you draw and i'll do i'll do a little reading from dina because dina is always good here. Ooh, okay so i'm asking guillaume i'm asking um what is the best easiest most beneficial path to guillaume flying love it path to Okay. So Carrie's going to draw and I will check in with Dina because I've been leaning on Dina a lot lately um, because she's so fresh to being human, <laughs> yet she's non-physical. So she has a lot of good insights. Okay. So Guillaume, she's saying, I can so relate to you, Guillaume. This is so understandable. This is so common, this idea that this idea that there can be something that sticks you, she says. But if you were able to poke your head up a little bit and look around, you'll just see that there's just this, this glue, this kind of residue that's keeping you where you are. It's really just that you just keep looking there. You really just keep, you, you just keep your head down and you're just looking at where you are. And if you could, if 
find a way, find a way to stop the resistance. Find a way to let your mind rest. Sleep more, meditate, meditate so that you just focus on a feeling or you just focus on a breathing. Just something to let your mind stop. You'll make more space for yourself. That's really what you're looking for. You're from where you are right now, making a little bit more space will allow you to pull your head up a little bit more and it'll keep working like that. So don't, don't look for a big solution. Don't look for, don't look for results too quickly. Just try to let yourself have a little bit more space, a little bit more time where you're not thinking about things. Put all of that on hold. Press pause on that. If your mind starts to go back to thinking about how you're stuck or how you aren't where you want to be, just say, mind, let's pause on that, please. Let's pause on that. Take a pause from that and make some more space. And, and then over time, not a long time, but don't, don't ask for it to be too quick. You will find yourself in a new place, a new place, but you have to let yourself get there. All right, that's what Dina said. That's pretty awesome from Dina. And look what I got. Oh, I've never had a drawing that maybe looked quite so simple, which I really love. So, um, and this actually doesn't contradict anything that Dina said. Um, they never do. <laughs> so this little blob right here that looks like a Pac-Man, um, this is stagnation. So I feel like this is where you are. And then what's in the middle, if you guys have watched any, red is such a fun and powerful color for me, um, but it is a double-edged sword. And you can kind of see even the shape here, you can see like the double-edged sword of red. So here's a deal with red. It is fervor, it is passion, it is everything that like, the feelings that bubble up inside of you that you get like feeling so good about, which I know Guillaume, you, feel that you live there. That's your dreams, your writing, your travel, the like all of the feeling of the amazingness of that, that is red. And um, it, it, so it's passion, right? But it can also be anxiety if you don't take action on it. And so what I like about what Dina said is I feel like this middle section is that key. It is feeling that feeling and taking inspired action without attachment to results. And so um, that is that is the middle. And then the other side of it, I mean, how fun is this? It looks like a joy balloon. It's a, so yellow is my color for smile, satisfaction, and ease. And um, it's you flying. It is literally you, Guillaume. You are the heart. Like, so that is a symbol for love for me and probably most people. But it is just you, open-hearted, joyful, flying untethered flying on the other side so the deal is you've been in stagnation there is something big and passionate in you take action without attachment to results and on the other side of that in probably beautiful wonderful ways you couldn't expect is you flying I love it. Thank you so much, Guillaume, for asking. Thank you for coming. Um, I love it. That was beautiful, Carrie. I like this tag team thing. It's really cool. Yes. So in an effort to just have something ready, I have my dear friend LH here. She's interested in self-mastery. In childhood, everything was in place to learn from skilled people, but I rejected it. Years later, more open to it. How's it going from your perspective? Thank you. So I know who you are. And every time I have a reading with you, I tell you how amazingly of a, I see, I can't even, I can't even say it out loud because I'm connecting with your energy, which is so big and masterful. Carrie, can you feel their energy? I feel like my feet vibrating. 
and and instant grounding. So mm -hmm. I don't know how that applies to you, LH, but that is like, I mean, instant grounding. Yeah. So what I mostly get from you and which has come up in our drawings before is like, there's a, a good structure to your energy. So you yourself can be as flowing as you'd like because there's a, an inherent structure to you. Um, and that maybe that's the grounding that Carrie is, is feeling. And so even today I did this um, while Carrie was speaking, there's a structure here again. So this is my intuitive alignment color, this deep steel blue intuitive alignment. So for you, so, so I've had this happen with clients in the past where they're like, I can't hear my spirit guide or I can't hear my higher self. So they were wanting to stop, ask a question and hear an answer. But for some people, if you're already integrated, you're just going to know what to do. You're going to feel where to go, when to go, why to go, who to call, right? It's an integrated experience. It's not a, I'm going to stop and ask my higher self for something. It's you already have the answer. The moment that you have the question, you have the answer. And that can take some getting used to if you're expecting to stop and have a conversation, right? You've got to trust yourself. So that's what's this, I, I believe, this integrated intuitive alignment. You have it. It's this strong structure here because this is that light gray again, intuition and truth, intuition and truth. It's making this basket for you. It looks almost like a ship or something, right? With big sails, the ship, the sails are guiding you. The ship is strong. This down here is a mental color. This is like a darker orange. So here, <laughs> up here, you can trust your mind. You can trust your instincts. You can trust your creative endeavors and trust yourself. Like you say that you rejected masters early on, but I mean, not to toot my own horn and everything, but like people find me as a master. Like I've been told that from so many clients. Um, and so I'll just own it. Like you found me. And you probably, you found Jim Self, he's a master. You found a lot of people who are, are there. You got ready, you found us. It wasn't a big deal, you found us, right? Like, so you're integrated, you're powerful, you're there. It's really just about believing it. Do you believe how powerful you are, right? So when I asked Dina if, how, how can I most easily allow more? She told me to just focus on unlimited, focus on the fact that I'm an unlimited being, unlimited. That really meant a lot to me. Last year, I was focusing on love. And all year, I've been focusing on self-acceptance and love. So it doesn't matter that I left the mayonnaise out 10 years ago. I'm still a good person. It doesn't matter that I had a disagreement with someone. I'm still a good person. Just like you matter. Your heart matters. You are a worthy being. You are an unlimited being, but it's up to you to put your eyes on that, right? It's up to you to come up to speed with that. No one can do that for you. But we're just saying from all these angles here to you, you're already a master <laughs> and you, what you are wanting is happening. So yeah, how does that feel? Let us know. Well, felt good to me. I kept yawning, which if you watch, guys, yawns are a good sign for me. Um, I don't know if you want to draw for Anita, but I want to tell you, um, Anita, I want to tell you that you used a word that um, triggers a process for me. So um, Anita says, I retired last year and while enjoying my time, I'm now starting to feel like I should be doing something. I travel quite a bit, but in between these travels, I'm feeling like I'm not being fulfilled. So um, here's the deal. That word should 
um, gets me. And just this week, I've used this process with two different clients to get like quick and dirty answers. So um, Rachel, you can feel free to um, do a reading for Anita, maybe on what she could be doing or um, what is the next thing for her. And Anita, I'm going to tell you the process. Um, so the process that I've been offering my clients is to recognize that should is a judgment. That should doesn't come from you or your higher self, but should comes from past conditioning, your parents, society, whatever, right? And so what I have people do is they spend two to three minutes writing a list where every single sentence starts with I should. So I should eat more fiber. I should uh, bring in my neighbor's trash cans. I should lose 20 pounds. I should clean the bathroom. I should start a publishing company. I should write that whatever, right? Whatever is going on in your consciousness, just do a should dump. Dump all the shoulds. I should be nicer to my brother. I should all the shoulds that you've, that you've got in your consciousness. You write them down. And after about two to three minutes of shoulding all over yourself, you take that same list and you look at it again. But this time, instead of should, you start every one of those sentences with, if I really wanted to, I could. So if I really wanted to, I could clean the bathroom. Do I really want to clean the bathroom right now? Nope. Cross it out. If I really wanted to, I could be nicer to my brother. Gosh, I really do want to be nicer to my brother. I will keep that on my list. If I really wanted to, I could bring in my neighbor's trash cans. I do really want to do that, actually. I'll go out and do it right now. But the whole point is to release yourself from all the shoulds that don't belong to you or all the shoulds that aren't yours for right this red hot minute. So um, that has been super helpful to a couple of people who I work with just this week in getting clear on like, ah, uh, what do I do? I've got so much going on. Should I do this? Should I do that? Like getting super clear um, and knowing pretty quickly. But Rachel, what do you have? Well, I'm actually putting in the chat a link. So if people want a private intuitive art reading where they can find our certified intuitive artists. So um, check them out. And awesome. So for you, Anita, definitely, definitely, that is a great process. I use it um, often. And what I got for you was a one color reading, which is a heart with an almost infinity sign on the bottom. When I drew it, I, it felt like I completed it, but you can, you can take that as a whole. And it is not black, actually, even though it looks black. It is deep, deep, deep green which is deep creative introspection. It's introspection. What makes me tick? What would light me up? How do I want to express myself today? That for you is how you find more fulfillment, according to this anyway. I'm sure there are many ways, but maybe that will light you up. Maybe you'll find something you love because of that heart. Maybe you'll find something you've always loved because of that infinity symbol and that heart, right? Like, oh yeah, I did photography in high school and I loved it. And now I have time to pick it up some more. Or I've always wanted to try pottery and I just never had time and now I do. So I would check that out. It doesn't have to be an art or a craft. It can just be you. What makes you tick? You're a creative being, you know? So anyway, that's what I got. I hope that's helpful. Thank you for asking. I love it. And I love it so much because I feel like both the process and the drawing are, um, I'm hoping, helpful to you, Anita. Yes. Um, let's, let's go to Dale. Oh, yeah, we have time. I thought we stopped the top of the hour. We stopped at 1230. Um, she said, my question is, what is my next focus to get to stay in my next love bubble? What's in there too? All right. I want to draw her love bubble. Okay. You draw her love bubble. Um, <laughs> and I'll just say hello to Des. Hello. You're welcome, Judy. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, and Crazy Pup, you're back. Hello. Oh, my God. AG, thank you. That's so generous of you. Wow. I'm just scrolling down. Hello, Mighty Good Magic. Hello, AF Plea. Um. Oh, 
I accidentally <laughs> left the chat. We are we are back. <laughs> Ooh, this is, I love it when this happens. Like when I'm drawing it, there's a certain feeling I have in my body and there's something, um, <laughs> something that didn't look like this. I wow. Will tell <laughs> right? Like, Bill, you're taking over the world next. <laughs> yes. Isn't this amazing? Okay. So Dale, this strong black circle Black is my color for certainty. And so your love bubble is made of your certainty. Oh, this feels so good. Oh, okay. Sorry. Mm, that was a good one. Dale, okay, I really can't, can't I can't stop looking at it. I can't stop looking at it. Um oh. I love it so much because it is strong and certain and it, oh, it feels so good, Dale. I want you, that on a t-shirt. Right? Yes. I'm, I'm such an artist. You are. Um, interestingly, though, blue is my color. It means um, like, it's not self-doubt, but it is worry or concern or oh I'm yawning again emotional tension <sighs> and then we've got the red on top of it and so what I believe this is saying is like we know girl we know you've got some worry you've got some tension you've got some you got some emotional tension you've got some concern don't worry you you encapsulate that in your bubble of certainty, and then you know we we've I can't find it. <laughs> we've talked about red, right? Oh, I'm yawning again. Inspired action and passion. Ugh. Okay, Dale, I'm gonna keep yawning, but I hope that you can. I also know Dale can feel into this. There is so much certainty. There is no need to worry. I love it. Did I answer you, Dale? I'm not sure if I answered you. Um, she said she was going to check back in later. Hmm. So she might have gone back to work for a moment, but um, I'm sure we'll hear from her. Definitely. Yeah, so Dale... Follow your passion. Like you have nothing to worry about. Yeah. What really helps me stay aligned and I'm not always aligned. I, I go like this, you know, like it's a process, but it's focusing on the feeling, not on the thing. So when you focus on yourself and you focus on love, focus on unlimited, focus on joy, whatever, makes you feel the best in that moment when you just carry the feeling around with you no matter what's happening out there the out there will raise to match you and then it will be really tempting to look at the things and hold on to the things and think the things are the things that are making you feel good but they're not the things are only there because you're feeling that way so go back to the feeling and the things will stick around. In Dale's drawing, there's such a, um, I didn't have the word. There is a feeling of faith. So I'm reading the question again, because I wrote, what's Dale's next love bubble focus? And I, I do feel like that is the focus is faith. Like when I look at the whole drawing, that's what I see. Um. Also, you were talking about focusing on the feeling. And I just had a client conversation with someone who did something incredible, like amazing. She she really had aligned with her ideal person. She's definitely up leveling. She easily has attracted and surrounded herself with like the kind of person and client that she had like only once dreamed of. She 
recently raised her rate. They've got clear on her offer, raised her rate, and then got an instant person like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course, let's do that right away. Like, like the easiest sale of her life. And then she was like, oh, God, now what? Like, okay, is the, is it all going to like, uh, should I wait for something bad to happen now? Like she was there. And so that's why I think what you were talking about is so important. Like our work was like, no, let's realign with the feeling. Right. But she was like, if I celebrate too much, is that going to be bad? Like there was this whole thing going on, which I know she's not alone. Like I'm, I'm raising my hand. I've been there. Um, but that's a good reminder. Like we don't need to focus on the thing or the person or the client or that it was too easy or any of that. We just focus on the feeling and we're all good. It should be too easy. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so fun how we do, right? Like how we play our way I I constantly, it's so relatable to question it. It's so relatable to be like, wait a minute, does that mean something bad has to happen? No, 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 no. Well, and I want to say, I we sort of glossed over this, but congrats, Rachel, on on claiming in front of, I know that you've said it to me before, but in front of YouTube and the world that you are a master, right? Because there is a tendency among us to be like, I mean, people have called me that, but whatever, <laughs> right? Like, um, yeah, congrats on claiming that. Thank you. I think I do on my coaching page at the beginning of it, but yeah, it's not like I walk around saying that, Hey, I'm Rachel actually it's ascended master. Thank you. Actually descended at the moment, but. <laughs> but That's yeah. a whole other conversation. <laughs> whole other conversation. I'm all about the descension. Um, Cause I'm here. So it's gotta go this way. <laughs> um, okay. That was a fun Let's little, see. that was a fun aside. I think we're on uh Yehudi now. AKA yes. Judy. Um, I love your question. How to keep the process of letting go of my fears. Yeah. Well, first of all, we just talked about it. It's focusing on what you want out of that. Why? So if you focus on the fears, the fears are going to feel bigger. Haven't we all done that? Haven't we all been confronted with a fear and we think we need to like undo the fear, but as we try to undo the fear, it gets bigger and bigger and freakier and scarier. And then we forget about why we're even having to move through the fear in the first place. And it just jumbles it all up. So what's the point? What are you trying to get to? Why are you, where are you going? That's where to focus on. Um, but I would love to do a drawing on this. So I'll let Carrie uh, chat away if she wants to. Well, and I'm just going to yawn my way through that. Thank you for asking this question, Judy, because I think this is a big one too. As we are, as we're all becoming more of who we really are and allowing more of what we really want. Like I'm thinking about Rachel's question about um, receiving my question about receiving, right? my client feeling, feeling like, oh, things are getting too good to be true. He, right. Um, oh, I'm going to yawn again. Ugh, goodness, you guys. Anyways, um, it, like, I, I do feel like that's such a common thing and it is a, it is an easy answer in that I think, you know, the answer and how do we relax into the answer? Hopefully that will be, uh, that would be the content of Rachel's drawing. Kind of, yeah. So here we go. Another sun. So this is joy down here, the core of everything, right? Why do we want anything? Because we think we'll be happy when we have it. That's what we want. We want to be happy. So happiness is at the core of this process, let's say, because that's what you really ask for. And then this is action. So keep walking. Keep walking with your joy. Walk with your joy. But this is how you can make it a little more manageable. And I know you you love this right here, Judy. You get so many of those. And this is brown, of course, which is what 
also helps me feel grounded. I don't want to feel out of control. I don't want to feel too in the air. I don't want to feel too big for myself. So I'm going to walk with my joy, but I'm going to do it feeling grounded. I'm going to paint every day or sing every day or talk to my close, deep friends every day or pray every day or whatever it is that helps you feel like you're connected to the joy and to the action. And that's not too much because look at over here. You don't need it anymore there, but this is saying like, hold your hand while you're going through this, hold your hand, do it the way that makes you feel more stable. And you'll get to a point where you can take, take the hand away. You can, you'll already, you'll be, you'll know, like I'm already supported. I don't need to go slow anymore. I got it. I got it. So you'll get to the, I got it. But right now just nourish yourself, be kind to yourself, give yourself what you need. Ask yourself, what do I need in order to walk with my joy today? What do I need to give myself to give myself permission to do that or to just to go after that? So that is what this is suggesting. And I love it. And I kind of have a question about it. I'm not sure if it's a question or a comment. So Judy, if you're still listening, I think my question is, does it feel, has it, does it feel scary to walk with your joy? Because as you were talking about it, as you were talking, I was thinking like, how often are we told to like walk with your fear or acknowledge your fear or let it be and um, walk with your joy is, feels way better. And also it's less commonly prescribed, you know, like it's, it's kind of saying like, allow, allow your joy to be ever present. And while we like, we who are on this path know that there's something very like refreshing, new, exciting about that. Maybe that's also for me, Judy, as I'm thinking about my drawing. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's funny, too, because I was just talking with a friend yesterday. Um, we were going back and forth about why I love optimism, even if it doesn't necessarily, like, pan out or give me what I what I thought I wanted, because optimism feels good. And I, I'm already getting something out of the deal by feeling good, even if what I feel feel good about doesn't happen or happens differently. And he was like, when I feel too good, I get afraid and I stop. He's like, I don't like feeling good. <laughs> and he's friends with me. So it's got to be a whole thing there, right? But yeah, what did you, what, did, what was the thing? Well, I'm just, I think I shared with you guys one of the books I'm reading. Oh, I can't show it to you because my computer's propped up on it right now. <laughs> But one of the books I'm currently reading is Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And it talks about that, like when a feeling is unfamiliar, even though we like it, we don't like it, right? Even though it feels good. And that's where um, that's where my client was. I, I'm projecting that onto you, Judy. So if that's not true, don't take it. Um, but this feeling of like, oh, I really do like feeling good until I don't like feeling good anymore because it's not actually it reminds me of... Um, I don't know, Rachel, maybe this is a call for me to get really drunk, but um, I don't like, so I don't drink alcohol and I mean, maybe like a margarita a year or something, but I'm just not a drinker. I'm a, I'm a very, I'm a rule follower and, uh, and a rule breaker, but growing up I was a rule follower and I didn't drink until like everybody else was already drinking. And by then like the novelty had worn off. And so all I found was that there was lots of parts of it that I didn't like. Um, and so I don't do it, but I also recognize that part of the reason why, what I don't like about drinking is the thing that everyone else likes about it. So like that feeling of kind of where you're like relaxed and loopy and like the feeling that most people are searching for, I think when they drink, I don't, I don't like that feeling at all. Like I want to return to the feeling of me, not, but you know, people say like, that's you uninhibited. And 
I don't remember where I'm going with this now, except to say that every time I let myself feel into that for a minute, that I'll, I'll like put the brakes on it. Like that's enough of that. So I don't know, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm supposed to get wasted. Well, <laughs> I'll keep you guys posted. That is the funniest thing ever. Cause I don't drink it either. I used to, and it was fine. I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed, you know, I thought I enjoyed the taste of some things though. I'll have a sip of that now. And I'm like, that is gasoline. I don't know how I drank that, but um, at the time it was fine, but there just came a point where I just didn't like it anymore. I just, I don't like it at all. Like, I don't like the feeling of even a sip anymore. Um, so I don't think you necessarily need to get wasted. I think for me as well, it's like, I'm just more happy being me. Like it doesn't, do anything for me. I don't need to relax more in that way because I'm already feeling really good. And even when I don't feel great, alcohol is not the thing that makes me feel better. So um, you just have different ways to feel good. You know, my partner likes to drink and for him, it does help him relax and unwind and it doesn't cause any issues in his life or anything. So good for him. But like, yeah, I, I think it's an interesting thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just interesting. Maybe that's it is that I don't, I am comfortable in my own skin. Yeah. Um, I don't need that particular elixir to like relax or feel comfortable. Um, and, but there is something about it that I, I'll get to a place and recognize I do not, I do not want to feel like this anymore. I find that interesting. I also don't want to explore it because I know I'll wake up the next day puffy. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's funny. There's, you know, I've been this way my whole life. And when I was a teenager, I was friends with this really cute boy and um, this girl. And we went camping and he was talking all cool about how he takes mushrooms and looks in the mirror to see his soul. And I'm like, I don't need to take mushrooms to look in the mirror to see my soul. <laughs> <laughs> and they were that was like my mic drop moment at the time but um people are always trying to get me to take mushrooms and I'm like why <laughs> why would I do that no offense Sarah if you're watching I love you very much and um it's great but yeah it, there's like been a pattern of that I'm like I probably don't need it it's okay now I feel like we're a little bit off topic but same my brother is always trying to get me to like drink or take mushrooms or do and I'm like you know, I can get where you're going without any of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, Des, I want to get to your question. I already have it pre-populated on my pad here. Um, and I'm going to do a past, present, future drawing for you because your question is, will things fall into place and get better soon for me and my kids? So this will show you like recent past, present, and close future. So hopefully we'll see it going in the right direction for you. Right. Also, my new shoes have been delivered to my porch and I'm really excited about it. I'll show you guys next time. <laughs> All right. And while Rachel's doing that, Des, I'm just going to ask, sometimes I like to use a pendulum for a yes, no. Rachel also has a whole, um, she has a whole video on her yes, no method. So that can be really helpful to you as well. But I'm going to ask um, right now, Rachel, you can go ahead and respond. I'll do it myself. Okay. Well, you know, Des, this is an interesting one because from how you asked the question, I was just assuming that I would see maybe something not, maybe one of my muddy colors or something in the past, like some hiccups or something. But it came out like a tree, like a beautiful tree. So this is supposed to be the past. This is wealth and ease. Wealth and ease. So it seems like you are a naturally good receiver. Like you can attract things to help you out pretty easily. Um, so that's good. And then he, this is brown. This is grounding. And I suppose it's more shaded to the left side. So maybe you came from more stability and now you're feeling a little bit untethered, maybe a little bit ungrounded because there's a little bit of like white in there. 
But I feel like maybe you moved more toward your truth because there is so much white on this side of the brown. Did you change, I don't know, relationships, locations, jobs, something like that to like be more in alignment with you? Like, did you make a positive change, but are maybe feeling a little bit insecure because of that? Not sure. But here, this, this is my inspired action color. And so this is mixing with that brown and white over here. It's like kind of taking from this kind of disintegration of grounding and going to inspired action. So this is where you're like, oh, I have the new idea. I know where to go. People are finding things for me. I'm attracting help. I'm, I have options. There's options and opportunities sticking into that present moment for you that will carry you forward. So inspired action is always going to lead in a positive direction. So these opportunities that come to you right now, you can trust those and those are going to help you get where you want to go. So to answer your question, yes, things will fall into place and get better soon for you. I got a yes too. So I just, I, I sometimes use my necklace as a pendulum and one way means yes. And the other way means no. What I will say is that it was a very gradual and slow yes. So like sometimes I'll ask and it'll like swing wildly. This was like very slow, kind of imperceptible. I actually had to ask a couple of times because I was like, is this happening? What's going on? Um, and it, it just kept giving me the same thing over and over and over again, which is yes. And it felt slow and imperceptible at first and then got bigger. I would say that's definitely in alignment with this here, like this, you're in a transitional space right now. And so the opportunities that come aren't going to feel that huge and big, right? You don't know this part of it yet. You just know this little sliver of it yet. So just go with it, trust yourself and everything's going to work out. Which I think is an important message for everyone and all of us who are on this path. Um, you know, Rachel and I talk a lot about just listening to yourself going where your intuition leads you. And sometimes those come as opportunities that don't feel like what you're asking for. Like I can think of the opportunities that have come up for me that it, I almost felt like I was settling, you know, like it was an opportunity, but it kind of felt like, I guess, yeah, I'll do that. Like, and then it turned into something incredible and amazing. And it wasn't, it was more like, well, I'm a yes to this, even though it's not what I'm asking for. Right. And then it became, or it took me to what I was asking for. And so it is really being able, that's why I find this yes, no method so important. Like I think about, um, I once took a copywriting job that seemed like it was moving in the wrong direction. It seemed like trading time for dollars. Like it seemed like everything I wasn't asking for, but it was a catalyst and it introduced me to people. And it like, it was important. It was totally the next best step for me. And if I would have only listened to my mind and my intuition, I would have missed that opportunity. So that is not just for you. That's for any everybody who's watching. Um, it's why your intuition matters so much and while tr why trusting yourself matters so much. Trusting your higher self matters so much. Yeah. Totally agree. Happens to me all the time. Because don't forget, your higher self can can only get you where it's easiest, like path of least resistance. So sometimes it's a pretty jagged path, but that's okay. So I just want to do this before we go. Um, Crazy Pup, it's never annoying to get this question. I love this question. I love spirit guides. So let me just check in in our last moment here. And Carrie, do you have to like split right away? No? I do not have to split right away. So we'll let Rachel get that... Uh get that those answers while I put my hair in a ponytail. So so crazy pup. This is a I think it's a similar message and that's okay. It's like relax. Relax. Have I gotten this gray sky for you before? I think I have. There's it's kind of like an overcast feeling where not much is happening, but it's time it's time to relax and recharge and find Find some space in your mind. Find some peace. Everything's happening for you. Things are happy, like things are being orchestrated for you. Just relax, and that's what they're saying. Just relax. Relax. 
you're on the plane right now. Doesn't feel like you're going anywhere, but when you get there, when you open your eyes, you're going to be in a new place. I felt like that was important for all of us. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, everyone, thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm so sorry if I didn't get to your question, but we are out of time. Um, I love doing these. We will do more and um, subscribe to get notified. So thank you all. Carrie, anything you want to close out with? Um, well, no, I just always want to, if people want to learn how to do intuitive art for themselves, where do we send them, Rachel? Intuitiveart.com. Intuitiveart.com. You can find our certified intuitive artist to give you a private reading if you'd like. Um, it's on the about page. Just keep scrolling down. You'll see their beautiful faces. And um, you have our free class right on the home page. So dig in. All right. Thanks, guys. This was fun. It was. Bye, everybody. We'll see.